Welcome to our 48th of OER Camp Global. This is our last and final hour, our closing time. But uh, we have three guests. We have special appearances in this hour. So um, I'm happy that so many of you are still with us or with us now. We've learned that so many people uh, joined for one or two hours uh, when it fitted into to their schedule, everything. Um, We learned from participants staying overnight, from participants uh, doing this during their lessons. Uh, we will hear from that in a minute from now. My name is Joran Moos Mehrholz. I would uh, do the intro for this hour. And uh, we will hear from Zeynep Varouklo. She's um, from the sector for digital innovation and transformation at UNESCO's headquarters in Paris. And for the final closing from Dr. Lutz Müller, he is the Deputy Secretary General for the German Commission for UNESCO. But as you may have learned by now, it always starts with you, the participants, because it's you who are doing what OER Camp Global is. We got a lot of nice, a lot of nice feedback saying, uh, so many great sessions, thank you. But we had to say, sorry, we did not provide any session. <laughs> it was your sessions. Uh, so we wanted to, to um, learn from you what you have learned. So please open your chat and write one thing into the chat. One thing you learned during OER Camp Global. One thing you haven't heard of, one thing you learned about, one thing, uh, I don't know, uh, an area where you deepened your understanding. Maybe you know it from, from social media, the hashtag TIL for today I learned. Well, actually for us, it's in the last 48 hours I learned, but that's not a hashtag. So today I learned in a broad sense, um, let us know one thing you've learned. And if you say there are two things, just write two messages into the chat. Uh, it can be a link to, it can be an idea. And of course you can also read what other participants have written there. And even if I go on talking, you don't have to stop writing. That's one thing that's really nice about online events. You do not disturb anyone when you keep writing uh, while someone is talking. Yes, 48 hours fly by very quickly. Yes, that's true. Christine, uh, she is, by the way, the head of OER Camp. Um, so I got another nice feedback, but I always carried it to Christine because I'm just the guy in front of the camera, basically. Um, please keep on writing your things you learned. And I have some suggestions what can happen after even the 48th hour is over because we have some ways how we can stay in touch. First, it's Twitter. Many of you are, are active on, on Twitter. We will see some of this uh, in some minutes from now. Um, we would love to stay connected with you. You can follow us at OER Camp, and of course, we will follow you back. And maybe some of us will also use the, the hashtag OER Camp Global beyond this um, event. We also have um, mail if we, we um, have to announce new events. Uh, we will write you a message if you sign up to our newsletter. It's oercamp.de slash news. And of course, we have, sorry about that, um, we have the uh, discourse that we were generously offered by Open Education Global. They have a discourse instance for several events happening worldwide. So uh, please go there, take a look at it. it um, we also put a link to, uh, on it on our homepage, oercamp.global, it says uh, connect, and you can share your thoughts there beyond the day not only for OER Camp Global, but for other activities too. That's where they also uh, share news about other events. And speaking of other events, um, we have several things going on in 2022. Not an OER Camp Global, not as we know by now, um, but open education and OER is so much about sharing and connections uh, that we thought it would be great to have some invitations how we could connect in 2022. And we have a video coming up right now, I think, um, where we ask some of the um, 
practitioners and activists and conference organizers in the field of open education to send us a video message to let us know what will happen next year as an invitation for you to join. Please take a look at it. Hello, I'm Marcela Morales, Community Relations Director for Open Education Global, reaching out with an invitation to join us next year at Open Education Week. Open Education Week is a celebration of openness from around the world. It is an event built by the community, for the community, and everyone is welcome. The week-long online event is an opportunity for actively sharing and learning about the latest achievements in open education worldwide. It is a collaborative community-built open forum seeking to raise awareness about open educational practices and providing an opportunity to learn and be inspired by the wonderful work being developed by the community. There are many ways to participate and be part of Open Education Week. You may host your own activity or event and post it on the schedule. You can share your favorite open educational resources and open assets and engage in conversation with fellow participants in OEG Connect. You can attend one or more of the activities being organized by others. We welcome all types of contributions that will help us highlight the diverse and dynamic world of open education. So mark your calendars and join us. The event will be held on March 7th to 11th, 2022, and the call for participation will open mid-January. For more information, please visit our website, openeducationweek.org. We hope you will join us. We would love to see you there. Hi there, I'm Paul Stacey. I'm the Executive Director of Open Education Global and greetings, season's greetings from a rather wintry, snowy day here in Vancouver, Canada. To continue to stay connected with your open education colleagues, I invite you to attend the Open Education Global 2022 conference taking place the 23rd to the 25th of May, 2022 in Nantes, France. This is the first time we'll have reconvened in person in a couple of years. Next year's conference aspect, this year's will focus again on the UNESCO OER recommendation. There'll be plenary sessions that deal with the UNESCO OER recommendation action areas. There'll be thematic sessions that explore eight different thematic topics highly relevant to open education work today, from students to open education research to the role of librarians, the role of publishers, and so on. There'll also be learning labs for more intensive kind of deeper engagement around a particular open education topic and meeting rooms available for projects or initiatives to meet or promote their work to a global open education audience. The call for proposals for the conference is already open uh, and will be open uh, through to the 14th of February, 2022, and registration is open now too. You can find out more at conference.oeglobal.org. Hope to see you there. Hello, I am the GM Penguin. I am pleased to be here today to announce that we will be the co-chairs for the OER22 conference in April next year. As you may know, GoGN is the Global OER Graduate Network. We are a network of PhD and MD candidates around the world whose research projects include a focus on open education. These doctoral researchers are at the core of the network. In addition, over 200 experts, supervisors, mentors, and interested parties connect to form a community of practice. GoGN aims to raise the profile of research into open education and offers support for its members and alumni. The network also promotes equity and inclusion in the field of open education research and aims to develop openness as a process of research. OER 22 is one of the foremost conferences for open education and it's a great honour to be invited to coordinate and work with all to the conference committee. The call for participation in the OER 22 committee will remain open until the 1st of January 2022. We hope that travel to the conference will be possible by then and plan to have one day of face-to-face -face activity in London with various online events around this. Please consider submitting a proposal once the call is open. We hope to see you there. To find out more, you can visit the all website at all.ac.uk. Learn more about GoGN at go-gn.net. Thank you very much, Marcella and Paul and Penguin. Uh, we just put the links to these three events into the chat. And I would love to have a recording of your faces when the penguin came up. Um, because probably I was the only one not uh, watching the penguin, but your faces. Um, 
we have uh, one more conference and I would like to invite Ebba to our virtual stage uh, to give us an invitation to the event she's connected to. Please, Ebba. Greetings, everyone. Uh, I'm Ebba Nelson from the ICD. Uh, it's the International Council for Open and Distance Education. I'm a chair of the OER Advocacy Committee as well. Uh, we have two upcoming uh, events uh, in, for ICD. The first one is about uh, the ICD Leadership Summit in 2021st of January 2022, and it will be hosted by Open University in uh, South Korea, and it will be a hybrid conference, uh, probably, um, so it will be online so, as well, so you have the possibilities to join. Uh, the second announcement I would like to do is about, we have right now a call for the World Conference, which will be in 2023. And the deadline for that call is the 21st of um, uh, February, 2022. So warm welcome to join with ICD. I will put the link in the chat here as well. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. And I would invite uh, anyone who would like to contribute an idea to connect in the next year uh, to the chat, just um, post a link or an idea there um, because we will do it the same way as we did OER Camp Global. We will do nothing but uh, connecting your ideas and your activities there. Um, so if you put any links in it, we, we can collect them and put them into our documentation. Now, I would like to share something about what you have done within the last 48 hours. So we put on some, some uh, numbers and figures. Um, we had registrations until this very morning, well, European morning, five hours ago. Uh, we finally closed down registration. Um, and uh, I think 300 of the registrations came during the event. Uh, so uh, there were more than a thousand registrations for the events. Uh, one number, which at least to me personally is even more important, it, it is the, the 87 here in, in the slide. There were registrations from 87 countries, and that's only that what we know about because registrations uh, didn't have to put their country in, um, uh, and we counted 21 time zones. So probably that's no one from from uh, I don't know what time zone is. Um, so this is really amazing, and um, we didn't expect that. We learned that people came in sometimes for only one session. To drop by, we saw many lurkers, which is totally okay, who went there just to listen. We, we read from them, uh, for example, on Twitter, just one hour ago, someone said, I, I didn't open my microphone once during the conference, uh, but learned so much. Um, and we had people, uh, at least whenever I was awake and coming into the, our Zoom plenary hall, they were there. I don't know how they did that. that amazing. Some more numbers. Um, we asked you from uh, which educational sectors you come from and to choose one primary sector because many of you uh, come from, from uh, different sectors or are active in different sectors. And this is what you said. And so quite uh, quite a bandwidth, I, I think, um, with higher education in the first place. Uh, but all the other sectors here too, clearly, um, that's amazing. And that's very typical for all OER camps too. Uh, we also ask you um, which areas of action as defined by the UNESCO recommendation and OER you would um, attribute um, a session to. So when, when you provided a session, you were asked, does this connect to any of the areas of action? And you can see on this slide, yes, they all do. And um, the first area of action, building the capacity of stakeholders, um, it's I mean, it's not by accident that it's the first area of action. Um, and I think it's it speaks for the recommendation that people could really connect to it. And that was also my experience when, when I had the chance to, to be in a session that these areas of action are really something that's connecting to, to the field. 115 sessions took place. There were more submissions. Some had to be canceled um, from 80, uh, 186 speakers. Some speakers even had um, several sessions or took part in several sessions. Some 79 sessions were supposed to be recorded. I hope we will see many of them in the documentation and SCAT. So two pers personal issues, uh, 
from my side would be one the invitation to if you had a session please uh, consider sharing the documentation in the SCAD because that's where we would like to link everything that we have from this conference for all the people that learn about OER Camp Global after the event or for all of you who couldn't attend all the sessions they would be interested in. Uh, documentation would be great. Um, the second issue is um, more sessions than you might think or might have seen um, had to be cancelled due to connection or bandwidth um, issues. So for all of us, for like me sitting in a big city in Germany, I sometimes tend to forget that this is huge as an issue for connecting the world, connecting to educational um, platforms. Uh, so in, in the first slot we had uh, 47 hours ago, two out of four sessions that had to be canceled and we, we took a look into it and both uh, had... Um, bandwidth issues and we heard for, from many else and we don't know how many else there were we didn't hear of so let's not forget that this still is a huge issue connection uh, on, on a technical level six days anyone know what six days is uh, six days would be um, the number of days uh, what the program would have covered if it was a nine to five schedule um, this is what uh, we learned uh, alongside um, preparing this event that 48 hours sounds somewhat like two days, but actually it's not <laughs> because if uh, we would, I don't know, start in the morning and in the evening, maybe have a two hour break, um, then that would be uh, a six day conference. So um, that's what we could have known beforehand, but we really deepened our understanding of what 48 hours are really. Um, Four, for the number of classes that we've seen active during sessions. So in the background or as uh, session uh, hosts, we had students um, uh, giving presentations. And um, I saw two of these presentations and they were amazing. Two, we had two closing times, two closing minutes actually, because Zoom meeting is limited in time. Uh, we learned that uh, um, luckily before we started. Um, so um, for, for European time, I think it was like four in the morning, we had to close the Zoom meeting for one minute each night uh, to, to hold up the connection for all of the rest of the 48 hours for this Zoom meeting. One story about collaboration. Um, is how the yoga session that took place uh, today emerged. Here we have five steps, which basically is, is just my, my reminder how things were going. Um, it started with a collaborative brainstorming. We invited some um, friends and family from OER camp uh, on brainstorming what could be done as not the typical session of a presentation, but different sessions. And someone wrote yoga session on it. And someone else, it was me, uh, was said, oh, stereotypical, this should come from India. But we didn't write this down. And um, then we put all the ideas into a Google Doc and we asked all the people who signed up for the conference or the unconference and said they would be willing to volunteer. We asked them, would you take a look at this Google Doc and just write a comment on what you could cover as a topic, as a session, or maybe you know someone. And then uh, Ramesh came and he wrote a comment on it. He said, uh, I know someone who learned yoga from someone else and she's really, really great. And I will connect to her and ask her if she would submit a session. And that's what she did. This is Dr. Kavita Badra. She submitted a session. Then. And this, this is how the session um, six hours ago, uh, ago, I think, came up, Yoga and Holistic Wellbeing. And I think that's wonderful because that's only one out of these 100 plus sessions and the stories behind all the other sessions we don't know about are probably all very different, but it's a, for me, to me personally, it's, it's a great example how connection in, in this world can look like, how collaboration can look like, because nothing of this was really like, like a technical miracle or something to comment on a Google doc or to have a brainstorming, but it really shows um, for me, how, how collaboration among educators and activists around the world can take place. 
we didn't um, make a, a final statistic on all things happening on Twitter, but uh, Alisa, she's with us. Alisa was um, the one for us uh, covering everything Twitter. Um, she identified three Twitter accounts that were the most active ones. So thank you very, very much to Nele Hirsch and Susumna and to Ramesh. And um, Ramesh, I guess, was was the one who really brought this event to India, where we got uh, the second most uh, registrations coming from when, when you um, look at the countries. And Ramesh was in so many sessions and active and participated and supported and was also uh, so, so very active on Twitter. So I don't know how many hours of sleep Ramesh get. Um, to me, it looked like he was always active even before the 48 hours. So special thank you. Um, as to all the participants, Ramesh maybe uh, as a as, uh, highlight, but so many people we have not on these slides, uh, but we would also um, express our gratitude to. Some treats. Um, this is a treat from Finland. According to the translation provided by Twitter, it says something like, if you don't have anything to do at the weekend, here's something about open education you can take a look at. Um, a German tweet uh, from Nele. Um, she said her most important learning about OER Camp Global so far, and this was the first day, was that there's so much resources, so much material out there that can be taken and remixed and adapted for your country, in her case, for, for the German-speaking communities. For example, she said, here is a complete course on OER from Poland. And um, I think this is a very typical treat that I've seen in the last three days, saying, oh, wow, I discovered something that I can use for my work. That's a tweet from Matthias. He had a session this morning. Uh, it uh, was called Let's Cook Together. And I don't know if this is um, the, the result from the session or the, the promotion for it, but it works. And one of our um, great, 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 great uh, hosts for, for the keynote hours, they were Shahira and Tina. I'm a huge fan. Uh, you did really great. And Shahira, uh, she also hosted the karaoke session together with Jim Groom. And actually, she was just supposed to be the host, but she had to go on stage and sing. And that was great, too. It was an amazing, very global, truly global um, karaoke session. And the last one was um, from, from a teacher. And by accident, she's from the same city as we are in, but... Um, she, she wrote this one, 48 hours straight, accommodating all time zones. She was catching herself thinking, I wonder what sessions are on now while teaching in school. I really love this tweet. So this is it now. Um, I would like to thank everyone who contributed to this event. It was really short notice, we know. So we had 73 days of preparation at the end of September, the German Commission for UNESCO um, and our team at Joran and Consorten said, okay, we go for it. We go for it doing it uh, even in December this year. And um, three weeks later, registration started. Uh, two weeks after that, the call for session started. And then it took actually a few days until the first session was submitted. And to be honest, we got somewhat nervous when after I think 10 or 14 days, there were I think four sessions then. Um, but then things really took off. And what I really can't stress enough, there is no marketing budget behind this system thing. So that now from 87 countries, there were uh, participants here. This is just thanks to the, the open education communities because they spread their words on Twitter and via email and via lists and via word of mouth uh, because there was no, I don't know, Facebook campaign or something. So this is really encouraging for us that in such a short time, such a global event can be organized. That's it from my side. Um, again, thanks to everyone who contribute, contributed to, to this event, um, especially to UNESCO and the German Commission for UNESCO. Also to the team behind the scenes, you will see their faces uh, on a tweet after the event. And um, 
to everyone, of course, who provided a session, who was there to volunteer, who just did the translation for, for someone else, or just was here contributing to the discussion. I would like to hand over now to Zeynep Varoglu in Paris um, for the first of two closing remarks. Zeynep, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. I think my camera is on. I don't know. I hope so. It is. Uh, okay, super. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joran. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you for the invitation to, to speak. Dear Dr. Lutz Muller, Deputy Secretary General of the German National Commission, uh, dear Mr. Joran Moos uh, Merhaus, founder of OER Camps, dear participants. It's a great pleasure to be here today at the closing ceremony of the OER Camp Global 2020, uh, 2021, where we have been gathering now 48 hours of learning and sharing about open education and OER. This is the first ever OER Global, and it's been an incredible success. It is highlighted, as Joran has pointed out, the diverse and outstanding work going on worldwide on the implementation of the OER Recommendation 2019. Uh, the 134 session submissions, the 15 hours of plenary presentations is extremely impressive. It's brought together more than a thousand participants from governments, institutions, civil society from 87 countries in 21 time zones. By the way, as Joran was uh, speaking, I looked up in Google how many time zones there are on this planet, and apparently that there are only 24. So basically it was in almost every 99% of the time zones. This event even pushed the limits of Zoom. Bravo. As Joran taught us, even Zoom had couldn't keep up with your energy and it needed a two minute break during this meeting. It's really very impressive. Wow. Thank you again to the German National Commission to UNESCO for organizing this important initiative. In particular, I would like to express our heartfelt, heartfelt appreciation to Dr. Molina, Barbara Molina, head of the Division of Education and Science and Dr. Philip Disselbeck, Program Specialist and Deputy Head, Division of Education and Science. This event is a testimony to the invaluable role of national commissions in the mobilization of stakeholders to catalyze the implementation of UNESCO's program. Today's workshop is particularly timely as we go into yet third year of the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2019, the UNESCO member states adopted the OER recommendation by consensus. It's impressive that OER, the OER recommendation celebrates its second anniversary. And events such as this demonstrate the power of this normative instrument for galvanizing actions towards mainstreaming OER in education systems worldwide. With regard to the OER recommendation in the coming biennium, UNESCO will focus on continuing its support for interregional, regional, and institutional cooperation through the OER Dynamic Coalition. This mechanism was established in March 2020, and it provides a platform for knowledge sharing and collaboration. In addition, UNESCO will be focusing on activities related to capacity building and policy development that support the action areas of the OER recommendation. I'd like to invite you to join us in these initiatives and would like to keep in touch and inform you of upcoming events and activities through the Dynamic Coalition. Coalition. If you'd like to join, I'll be putting the link in the chat and you're very welcome to join and uh, we hope that we will have an opportunity to work together in the coming two years and the future. Today, as we enter 2022, it's abundantly clear that digital content has become essential for learning. Furthermore, in these challenging times, OER has been recognized for its vital role in ensuring contextualized and relevant knowledge sharing. It's demonstrated its transformative power in contributing to the continuity of formal and informal learning during the COVID-19 crisis, where online and digital became the new normal for learning worldwide. Dear colleagues, this global OER bootcamp is a critical continuation to the voyage that we've undertaken as an international community to build inclusive knowledge societies. These are societies where members have the skills not only to acquire information, but to transform it into knowledge and concepts and enable them to take control of their lives and contribute to the social, economic, and environmental development of their communities, which in its essence is what OER has the potential to do. This is what we're aiming for. And in this spirit, I thank you for your participation and engagement over the last 48 hours. 
Finally, I would like to express our heartfelt appreciation to the session facilitators and the keynote speakers and all the colleagues that have been working behind the Zoom screen to make this meeting possible. I just asked Joran if he had been up for 48 hours and he explained to me that they have, uh, there's shifts going on and there are lots and lots of people that have been working behind the scenes also to make this possible. And I would like to express our gratitude for their very hard work. We count on all of you to continue the important work that you have embarked upon in this area. I trust that this will be another milestone event in our in joint journey of sharing and co-creating knowledge. And I look forward to working collaboratively, collaboratively and innovatively together in the future. Thank you very much and bravo. Thank you very much. I would like to head over the virtual microphone to Dr. Lutz Müller. He's the Deputy Secretary General for the German Commission for UNESCO. Thank you, uh, Jörn Musmerholz, and thank you um, all of you who stayed on, on the Saturday until the very end of this OER Global Camp. I think it has been said already several times that it has, has been a huge success. I agree with Jörn Musmerholz that Maybe the most impressive figure is the figure of countries that the participants, the more than 1,000 participants, actually stem from. But of course, the number of the sessions, sessions that have been submitted in the plenary hours is just as impressive. But I mean, we have learned not some not only about um, quantitative success, we have also really learned about quality inspiration, collaboration, exchange. That's basically what OER is all about and also what this meeting was all about, this meeting on open education and open educational resources. I mean, I've heard from many of the sessions, I've not participated in all of them, that there really has been a very co uh, collaborative atmosphere and the, um, the breadth of the portfolio of the topics that, that have been discussed is just amazing. For example, considering contemporary arts and OER, artificial intelligence for open education, sports, computational thinking and OER, enabling OER in Southern Africa, using open education to support anti-racist teaching, gamification, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This broad portfolio of topics, and at the same time, the broad portfolio of UNESCO member states that have been on the table from um, the global south in Namibia, South Africa, to the very north in Finland, from um, Australia, over Malaysia, India, um, all the way through Senegal, Thailand, to Barbados. I think the entire globe was, um, uh, was sitting around the table and on equal terms exchanging on how to further drive op open education and open educational resources forward. And that by itself is a value at this, um, because this demonstrates that open once more, this it demonstrates once more, it's not a new um, idea and a new insight, of course, that open education is um, an approach that is essential for both the Global South and the Global North, and that there are fantastic initiatives in the Global South as in the Global North. and. We, we really also have to learn more to work together in promoting and fostering open education um, between the countries. Um, Jöran Musnerholz just read this tweet from Nele Hirsch that we need to become more aware of fantastic resources that exist in other languages and that could be reused or remixed in other languages to move forward. And we also can take inspiration from fabulous open education uh, approaches, political approaches or practical approaches in other parts of the world in how to move this field forward in our own country. So this openness, which is in the open education and the open education resources, is it's an openness which is not only for on, on a, at the legal level, um, it is, it's a, it's, uh, it's an approach in spirit, approach which uh, specifically has to go beyond borders, in, in particular beyond the borders between the global so south and the global north. Um, and I also would like to emphasize, and I think a couple of sessions in this global OER camp have emphasized that 
that um, UNESCO, after the 2019 recommendation on OER, has established um, a couple of weeks ago as another recommendation, this time on open science, which also includes um, open educational um, resources. It doesn't subsume it exclusively, but it includes this into an still larger, more integrated approach of openness in, uh, because with the understanding that openness is, is a driver for justice, it's a driver for fairness in the world, it's a driver for access, it's a driver for also um, quality control and quality um, teaching, quality learning, quality research. So we have, we are building also in the context of UNESCO a very global, very broad community and a broad alliance of many different partial communities who are in the same spirit work towards this openness in education and research. And there is a huge and an excellent opportunity now to move this forward. And I'm very happy that through this OER Global Camp, we could make a timely contribution uh, to, this, um, to this new spirit, this new momentum. I would like to thank very much um, UNESCO for their support and um, our colleague, uh, Seine Barolo, I, I, I address this to you, but also, of course, your entire team, that you have um, made this possible, your participation, in spite of the Internet Governance Forum, which goes on in parallel in Katowice in Poland, it has just finished yesterday, but that your team um, in Paris has been uh, responsible also for ensuring the contribution of UNESCO to the Internet Governance Forum. So thank you for also being here at the same time with us in this OER Global Camp. But um, Juran Musmerholz, Juran Consorten, your entire team, thank you so much for this Great, uh, great commitment, this fantastic work. You said it yourself just a minute ago. It was only 73 days that we were able to prepare this together. And of course, your team, all the people in, in front of the cameras, behind the cameras, the visible, the invisible team, the technicians, um, the people who are engaged in, in, uh, in setting up the technology, in showing us the figures of countdown to the last session until the last moment, all that. I mean, all of your team, thank you very much. That was extremely professional, extremely valuable and extreme fun to work with you. Um, thank you for making this happen, for realizing this in such a short notice. That was really amazing. I also, of course, have to thank my colleagues, Barbara and Philip. The, the names have been said before. Great job of you and a great commitment as well that demonstrates how well you are really also committed to o OER. And we, as German Commission for UNESCO, we will also, of course, stay committed to OER. And we will um, promote this further, the implementation of OER in open education and the entire recommendation behind it in Germany. And in that regard, we're really looking forward to working with the new German government because luckily um, the intent to strengthen OER is also included in the coalition of agreement of the new German government, which was just produced a couple of days ago. So the, the momentum is also here in Germany really going forward. And But this is not only at the national level. Um, as I said before, OER needs to be understood and needs to be promoted at the global level. This is, cannot be a national effort alone. And I, I think this OER Global Camp has shown this. Um, we, I think through this camp, um, we can be proud also to make a contribution because in two years from now, the UNESCO Global Co uh, General Conference will discuss the first reporting uh, uh, reporting cycle of the OER recommendation. And I think what we've seen today, what we've seen over the last two or three years is that OER, the, that open education is really alive and kicking, has a lot of thrust, is really moving forward. And I hope that we, this meeting could inspire many of you to, to, to see that you have a lot of colleagues, a lot of uh, people that think alike and that you can tie into their work, that you can rely on, that you can build alliance to. And this is a good time for open education and OER. And let's 
after this OER global com global cam that we hereby close, we think this is not a closing, but this is just an a, the start for a new beginning for 2022. So thank you for all of you for hosting, providing contributions to this meeting. It has been a fantastic experience. Thank you to all of you. Thank you.